They Just, only let us shoot in JPEG. They won't let you shoot in RAW? That's <laughs> Do they have you shoot in manual? No. Oh, gosh. <laughs> so they have you do auto white balance too, right? And the, the thing that's crazy is manual's not hard. Photographers make you think it's hard. One of the main concerns I have is I have people who intern for me and they come fresh out of, photo out of photography school four years and they can't shoot manual. Come on folks, let's get with the program here. There's so many people that are in your boat. Yeah. So I am in no way demeaning you. I, I want to use this video to... Help others. Yeah, really I do. Exposure is good? Because yeah. if it's not, I'm going to post this video that you <laughs> shot and say Michelle Welker Michelle shot Welker, this and, and she completely... all over it. She not a videographer, not a videographer, not a videographer. For, for every comment you have, you know I'll have many other people who comment <laughs> otherwise. Especially with all... I just said ignore. Okay. Hi, my name is Jason Lanier. We're back here at the Star Hecla Mine in Burke Canyon, Idaho. Uh, we picked up... Uh, a photographer who's going to be helping us out today named Russell. Point the camera to Russell. Say hi, Russell. Hello. Russell is joining us for the evening on this excursion. Yes, he's lost his mind. Uh, but we're going to go in, back inside. We're going to do some really cool stuff. I might turn a video camera on or two, do some time lapse videography. Uh, we still have some places that we need to explore inside. Um, the locals keep driving by wondering who this fool is in the fedora. So I just keep waving. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, we're gonna make a great video for you guys and show you guys a bunch of stuff. Let's Russell, right here. you are <laughs> coming into the Star Hecla mine. You're coming in on your own volition, your own free will. Um, it's dangerous. Okay. There are places that you can fall, die. You could probably choke on asbestos. Mesoth you can get mesothelioma. I don't know what it. I'm going in there. She's going in there. But I. Want, are you at least 18 years old? Yes. But I just want to make sure you, got, you understand you're entering on your own free will. Um, you're signing away your life. You cannot hold me, Michelle, or the Star Hecla Mining Company responsible for anything that happens in there. And I just want, I want you to make sure that, that I am being, not joking around about that because that's how I get in is when I say, hey, look, you guys aren't responsible. So you need to be able to do the same. I can do that. As Zach Bagans would say, Locking ourselves in for the lockdown. No, I like those guys on Ghost Adventures. At least they have fun when they do it. Somebody came out here and wrote up a little article. Oh, really? I read it before I came out here. This is awesome. So ignore what Russell said, because I'm the expert on this issue. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I used to work in hotels, so I'm eager to see if that actually is a hotel. Looks like we're about to debunk a myth. That doesn't look like a hotel. I'm stuck in my head. <laughs> let it go. Let it go. By the way, did I mention I get songs stuck in my head really bad? So then you're going to be serenading me all night? That's right, baby. Oh, baby. You know you want it. <laughs> Why don't you sit there and pretend you don't want to get serenaded? This place was made for a horror movie. Does that not sound like fresh out of a movie? Just my, even my footsteps. I'm not very freaked out though, because I've let it go stuck in my head. This authorized personnel only. That's exactly who I am. Did you hear the ghost? I did. Yeah. What are you saying? Jay Z. No. Country. Lawrence Welk. <laughs> no, wait, I'm not back. This is a crazy. Oh, that is amazing. Yeah. Now I'm just letting you know. I never recommend walking on roofs. I'm gonna walk out, but it's not something I recommend. You want to come out? You're coming out on your own. There's the devil dog. I'm going to remember this place. Let it go. How did you get that it's stuck in your head? I don't know. I'm not very happy that it is. Yeah. 
Just a brief intermission here, guys. I want to explain this next part of the video. As I stated at the beginning, uh, Russ came up to the mine just to check it out. He's a photography student up there. And when he saw us roll up, he asked if he could join, and he did. What ended up happening was, uh, I told him he could come and assist, and what ended up happening was a, a conversation between me as a, as a pro and a photography student. And it was completely unplanned, and uh, I just planned on shooting and having him kind of help with bags and so on and so forth. And we ended up having a very lengthy conversation about what he was learning, how he was being taught, and just photography in general. And I let him pick my brain. This is a, a very candid conversation. It's very open. and. Uh, I don't really hold back on my feelings because I think that uh, in some ways photographers are not being taught the right way. It's not an indictment on the photography educational system as a whole because I think there are a lot of great schools, a lot of great teachers, uh, other photographers who teach workshops who do a great job, who um, help photography students and, and, and potential photographers to really grow. Um, but then there are others who don't. And that's really where my, uh, or who my uh, comments are focused at. I want to make something clear. These comments are for people who uh, are looking to do photography as a, as a profession. I'm not concerned with how people um, or what people do when they're just wanting to do it for recreational purposes. But if somebody really wants to progress their photography career and really wants to do something with it and or just wants to reach a high level of photography skill, um, that's who I'm talking to. And that's what I'm addressing my comments for. So when I mention things like why you should shoot in RAW, Guys, look, the vast majority of the public shoots in JPEG, that's fine. Um, but for those who really want to have uh, editing capability, for those who really want to get the most out of their images, they're going to shoot in RAW. It's just the flat out truth. We talk about white balance and the little icons that pop up on your cameras. Again, that's perfect for the person like my wife. She doesn't really care about ever learning Kelvin. My wife's a brilliant person, but she really has no desires to ever learn what Kelvin is. So those icons are perfect. But again, for those people who are seeking to really push their photography into that into the next level, you gotta shoot with Kelvin. And as it relates to the actual educational part and how any student is being taught, um, when I express any sort of a, a surprise or I'm incredulous as to what someone does or doesn't know, that's not a reflection on that person or that individual student. That's a reflection on how he or she is being taught. Um, when you come to my workshops, you learn all the sorts of stuff, composition and lighting and posing and I really get into the fundamentals of photography, and that's really the way I, I wish more photographers were taught, by me or by anyone else. See, my, the real point of this video is, when you understand the fundamentals of photography, when you understand the pillars that build the home, that build the Colosseum, you can just, you're, you're unleashed. You can just go out there and create to the best of your ability, and that's, that's really what I wanted to communicate. Another thing to keep in mind is uh, there was a lot of times we continued the conversation where the camera wasn't rolling, so sometimes you may come into the middle of, a, of our conversation, and I included it because I think it's necessary or good for people to hear, but you're also sometimes coming into the middle of a conversation, and there's, there's some stuff that's left out of it simply because the camera wasn't rolling. Guys, I also talk about gear in this video. I'm not making fun of any photographer and the gear they do or do not have. Uh, I talk about uh, how, quite frankly, kit lenses are crap, and that's not a, an indictment on or statement on any photographer and the budget they do or do not have. I'm speaking about, really, myself. I tried to convince myself and use kit lenses for years, and they suck, and you need to know that. You need to know that. You need to know that Good lenses make a big difference. Good cameras make a big difference. You put the right camera in the right photographer's hands, golden hour, perfect. And you need to be told that. Perhaps the most controversial part of this video will be when I talk about composition. And I wanna really define what I mean by the composition. Of course, there are ways that we can learn how to frame our shots, how to find our leading lines and the symmetry and the rule of thirds and all those great things. And I think for somebody who naturally has an eye, Learning composition is fantastic. Um, I think that uh, it, it really helps to make them that much better. But what I really am trying to communicate when I reference composition in this video, because we talk a lot about it, composition boils down to your ability to bring all of the different parts together and make it something amazing. And that takes talent. To me, the talent part of photography is your ability to build your composition. Most people who are adequately intelligent can learn lighting, can learn um, posing, can learn you know, exposure, all those different things, ISO shutter, 
your aperture, I mean, all those, all those things. But your ability to see the shot, your ability to create it in your mind and then get that, get your creation from your mind into your camera. I'm sorry, that takes talent. And that's what I'm talking about. So when I talk about how you really can't teach composition, of course you can teach all those things, leading lines and again, rule of thirds and all that great stuff and symmetry and all those wonderful things. But if somebody doesn't have the talent, spending all that time on that isn't really gonna give them the result that they want. Whereas somebody who knows what they wanna create, um, you, you can talk about composition for a little bit, they're gonna get it like that, I promise you. That's where I notice the talent. That's where I see people excel. So what, what I'm proposing more than anything is for photographers, the vast majority of your time shouldn't be on the theory or history of photography. Sure, it's fantastic. It needs to be on real world, hands-on application. That is where you're going to excel. That is, gonna, that is where you're gonna figure out whether or not you're talented. And I'm sure many of you watching this video are very talented. Some, I'm sure, are more talented than I am, but you'll never know it unless you get out there and shoot. So as, as great as some of our uh, previous photographers in history have been, and we've had some amazing, amazing photographers, studying about them is great, but unless you get out there and shoot, your knowledge of what Ansel Adams did doesn't really matter. Um, you need to get out there and shoot, guys, and that's really what I wanted to portray in this video. So when I talk about the composition, I'm talking about bringing all of it together. I'm talking about you seeing that shot before you take it. I'm talking about your ability to walk into a room or into a scene and say, that's where the mountains go, that's where the, the river goes, that's where the trees go, for you to be able to bookend your shots. And quite frankly, guys, I think I'm pretty good at photography. I never took any classes on any of that. So that's why as it relates to learning composition, absolutely guys, take the time, learn all of those things. But if you get out there and shoot, you're gonna know if you have it or not. And that is what this discussion is all about. And the only way you're gonna know if you have it is if you know how to shoot in manual, you know how to use your lighting, you know your f-stop, your ISO, your, your shutter, all those things. Once you know those things, then you're unleashed creatively. There's lots of people who play the piano. There's very few who can actually compose. You could teach me for 10 years the rules of composition, of painting, of technique related to drawing or painting. I don't have the talent. I just don't. I couldn't draw or paint to save my life. And that's the point I'm trying to make. There is talent in photography, and that talent is your ability to bring the entire shot together and create something beautiful that came from inside your heart, inside of your head, and made it into your camera. So I hope this has helped explain this, and uh, enjoy. Russell, do you shoot in RAW? We haven't got that far, that far yet. They Just... only let us shoot in JPEG. Why? That makes no sense. Because they don't want to show us post-processing. They only want to show us like little things to tweak in Photoshop. Just, I don't know why. Just go get the... Apparently I need to watch your YouTube videos. Yes, you do. Have an idea of what I'm doing. Yes, you do. Sounds good to me. They won't let you shoot in RAW? That's <laughs> Never mind, I'm not supposed to say that word. Get in trouble on my videos for all my political incorrectness. Look at that light. That's gorgeous. You don't edit your videos after the fact? Say again? You don't edit your videos after the fact? Oh, I do. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just, I leave a lot, I, lo I leave the fun stuff in. <laughs> I figure the world has too much political correctness. I completely agree. There is stuff I edit out that's like, okay, if I leave that in, I'll... It, some of the stuff I'm like, I've offended approximately 90% of the American public. <laughs> There's n absolutely no reason to shoot in JPEG. That's idiotic. Seriously, it's a waste of time. <sighs> Come on, folks, let's get with the program here. Yeah, I, you know, honestly, it's not necessarily a, uh, a thing that I don't want to learn, but it's kind of nice to start at a building block and work your way up. No, to, it's no. a waste of time. Waste of time completely? Yeah. Okay. I have so many people I have to reprogram who come to my workshops. Oh, they, wow. Yeah, because I do workshops all over the U.S. and I'm like, okay, forget everything you learned. Forget everything. And then I'll teach them something. People will tell me I learn more in a day than I did in a year. I'm like, you got to reprogram because I just teach you the things. These are the things. These are the fundamentals of photography. You get these things right, 
You'll be golden. This other crap they try to feed you is ridiculous. Do they have you shoot in manual? No. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Stop doing it. It's a waste of time. I teach people how to shoot in manual in 30 minutes. I mean, for heaven's sakes, we have digital cameras. You can actually see what you're creating. Back to the, back to the video. <laughs> I never stopped it. So they have you do auto white balance too, right? No. Um, Don't, they're having you do Kelvin? <clears throat> what? What do they have you do? Choose those little stupid icons? Yeah, so like... That's a waste of time too. Sunshine, clouds. Yeah, that's a waste of time. I didn't Fun. know that there was anything besides that. Yes. It's called... So, so is whims a waste of time? Because that's kind of like what they base their... What is whims? White balance, ISO, uh, mode, and scene. I am very interested to see what that's supposed to do. It's supposed to make a... I feel like an idiot. <laughs> no, 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 no. You shouldn't feel like an idiot. I'm actually, I'm not, I'm not looking at you in that way at all. Okay. It's very intriguing to me. Don't feel like an idiot. It's very intriguing. This is a level 200 class. I thought we would have progressed past the yeah. basics. And so far, this class has just been themes. So we go out and we're supposed to be able to compose the correct photograph with the correct white balance, the correct ISO, uh, the correct f-stop or that's complete f crap and here's why okay. if you're shooting in in a priority mode you're not doing that right so you're not doing it so you aren't doing it so you're not learning anything yeah you, you follow because it's more automatic than yeah that. I mean, it's not completely automatic pretty much it's not Pretty easy. much. Manually. It's a teeter-totter. All you do is, oh, I move one way, the camera moves the other. Right. It's a complete crutch. And the, the thing that's crazy is manual's not hard. Photographers make you think it's hard. Hmm. It's not hard. You set your ISO, and then depending on what type, if you're shooting natural light, and you're going to shoot, then you're going to be adjusting, you know, you're going to really be adjusting your aperture so you can drive your depth of field in your bokeh. Right. If you're shooting with a flash and you're going to do it with shutter because of the fact that you're limited by your flash sync speed, because if you put a flash on your camera, you can only shoot up to 200th or 400th of a second, depending on whatever camera you use. Right. Photographers, this is, I'm talking to new photographers or people who are still in that learning mode. The technical aspect of photography isn't that difficult. It's the creative part. And the creative part is the part you can't teach. And that's why there's some photographers who are incredibly successful. And then there's everyone else. You can't find that talent until they understand the technical. Once you get your technical down, it unleashes your creativity and your talent. Because now, it's, see when I first started off, the hardest thing was I could see what I wanted to create. I had no idea how to create it. Right? Yeah, because you can see something that's really cool. But you're like, like I don't know how to capture that. When you take that shot and all the settings are wrong, your shot doesn't look anything like what you saw. Correct. So when teachers send students out and they're practicing in modes that aren't manual, you're really not learning. Hmm. You're not. And I'm not, making, I'm not making fun of your class, your professor. One of the main concerns I have is I have people who intern for me and they come fresh out of, photo out of photography school four years and they can't shoot manual. Mm. Someone says, oh, I have a degree. I'm like, it means nothing. Let's go, let's go shoot for 10 minutes. I will figure out in 10 minutes if you know your stuff. Easy, easy. I believe that. So the point I'm trying to make is not to talk about how big and bad I am. The point is for newer photographers, because I'm trying, this is actually very interesting because they're going to love watching me talk to a newer photographer. They act, my viewers really will. Because, so you're, oh, by the way, your likeness, you'll never be compensated for any video or any picture you're in by me. Just, I'm making you aware right now. Awesome. So you agree to that? Yeah, I'm All right. fine with it. All right, perfect. For you and newer photographers, once you guys, if you put the time and effort into learning the camera, don't worry about your composition. It doesn't matter. Really? Doesn't matter. 
You want to know why? That was like... You want to know why? Yeah, I want to know why. I don't believe you can really teach it. Mm. Because composition, that is the talent. Composition is the talent. That's the thing that you see that other people cannot see. You can teach the rule of thirds, that's fine. But I can walk into a room, or any really good photographer can walk into a room, and they'll see something that the other 99 won't. And that's the difference. So if you teach the technical, the composition, they're gonna find their way. It won't even be a difficulty. When I teach workshops and I see my, um, my students, I know who's got talent. It takes me about, I'll see him walking around and I'll see the guys and I'm like, he has an eye. Mm. Right, I said it earlier, what was that thing I said? Oh, there's, um, there's people who compose music and then there's people who play. The piano player. And there's lots of people who can play, who can reproduce, but there's very few that can create. And that is, I was saying earlier, I said that more, that's the best way I've ever, I didn't even think about it ahead of time, but it's the best way I could describe the difference between picture takers and artists. Because you know what I mean? I'm not trying Absolutely. to go all zen on everybody. I'm just trying to, <coughs> sometimes people say, oh, all you're doing is taking a picture. And I'm like, then go do what I do, brother. Go do it. So all I'm trying to say to newer photographers is when they send you out on all these things, I mean, by all means, don't piss off your professors. Do what you're supposed to do. But on your own time, get out there and learn how to shoot. And once you know how to shoot, no one taught me anything about composition. I am 100% 100% self-taught. And all you got to do is you'll see, I'm just telling you man, the folks who here's the thing, the folks who have talent, they're going to see it no matter what anyone does. But the folks who have talent, they are held back by the classes, the teachers, the books, the seminars, the whatever who tell them Oh, you have to learn X, Y, and Z about composition, and they make it, they overcomplicate it. When it's like, show me how to shoot. It's like a race car driver, right? Some guys can do it. But you gotta show them how to drive the car. Once they know how to drive that car, if you're Jeff Gordon, you're like, I got this. Mm -hmm. Know what I mean? Yeah. But Jeff Gordon doesn't need to know how the spark plugs ignite the engine. I probably said that wrong, I'm not an engineer. My point is, you gotta get it right. The creative is released and unleashed when they know how to do what they do. Do your professors tell you to never shoot above a thousand ISO? Well, it causes too much noise, doesn't it? So what do you do? So you just don't take shots? What do you mean? So if you're down to, if you're handheld and you're down to a sixtieth of a second, you're down to your low, your widest f-stop, 2.8, 3.5, whatever it is. Yeah. And then you're at a 800 ISO. Okay. You just, you just stop taking pictures? No. What do you do? Find a tripod? Okay, so let's say you're shooting a wedding, you can't find a tripod, what do you do? Oh. Add more light? So your eyes open. So let's say, okay, that's, that is good. That's good, you can add video light or flash or whatever. But you shoot with more ISO. The sensors these days can handle it. And see, the, the other common misconception about noise, a huge misconception, Noise is not just driven by ISO. Noise is driven by low, not enough light. Mm -hmm. You can shoot in midday and have noise. Just if you're not properly exposing your images. The best thing you could possibly do is tomorrow, just put it in M and start firing away. Firing away. You have a light meter, right? You know where the light meter is in your camera? No. Right in okay. your camera. There's, there's ticks to the, to, to the plus and ticks to the negative. You're gonna see it. It's gonna look like a ruler. Okay. Okay, when you look right through your viewfinder, it's gonna be ticks. Yeah, Okay. I've seen that. You've seen that, right? Okay, so that's Switch the... it to M. When it is in the middle, that is, that is what your camera would produce as a result. Okay. Okay, what you're gonna wanna do is go about two to the negative. You always wanna underexpose a little bit. Hmm. Okay. Because you can never fix an overexposed shot. So you're just talking about exposure compensation then, right? No. Oh, you're talking about something totally different. Well, exposure compensation is the, the dumbed down version of manual. Oh. Does that make sense? Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. There's so many people that are in your boat. Yeah. 
So I am in no way demeaning you. I, I want to use this video to help others. Yeah, really I do. And people, and this is another complaint I get, oh Jason, there's so many photographers and all your video is doing is, is create more photographers. Here's the honest truth for all of you professionals who are very scared of newbies, which is pathetic. The folks who really understand what they're doing, they're not that many. So you can train everyone in the world. There's only so many that are gonna rise to the top. And there's only so many that have the drive and, and persistence to do it. These windows are gorgeous. Trying to get it. You always expose for the background, Russ. You light for the foreground. That's another thing that most people don't do these days. If you look, vast majority of photographers' websites, it's all daylight pictures, blown out skies, everything's white. Right. It's pathetic. It's not photography, that's picture taking. I'm gonna get in big trouble for this video. <laughs> That's phenomenal. That shot is freaking awesome. Russell, you could be more talented than I am, but you'll never know it unless you know how to create it. You know what I mean? Oh. Yeah, you're gonna die if you fall down that. Yeah, I don't wanna go see. That's awesome. Lines between those four sets of windows. I appreciate that information I can get from anywhere. Absolutely. Free information is special. Uh, I don't know why you think this is free. You're, you're gonna have an invoice on your dash when we leave. <laughs> That's phenomenal. I know. There's something amazing about glass, you know? I hereby dub this the Hotel Russell. Anytime you look at your ISO, and the ISO has an expanded range, like it goes H1, H2, H3, or whatever, don't, those are just complete garbage. It's a way of the camera manu manufacturer just trying to get away with the higher ISO rating. Think of it as, you know how a camera can have a, a digital zoom and an optical zoom? Yeah. And, and digital zoom is garbage? Right. That's what expanded ISO is. Oh. It's fake. This photography excursion was sponsored by Diet Mountain Dew. <laughs> Do the do. More product in here, isn't it? All right there. Wait a minute. What's your label showing? Geez, what am I doing here in the middle of an abandoned place? I know what would taste good, a Diet Mountain Dew. <laughs> Geez, where could I find one of those? Hey, look, here is one. It's the spot. Is that good? Yeah, you did good. <laughs> I know. I was in, you know, it's funny, I, I never shoot in manual mode, but for some reason yesterday I was like, I'm gonna turn it to manual mode and find out what happens. Right. So what's the worst that can happen? You take so a bad I just shot. Go all, I'm like, how far does this go? It keeps going. Yeah. This is way farther than it is in aperture pri yeah. priority. Have you learned how to focus out to infinity yet? Uh, sort of. So I got my camera from Costco for seven hundred dollars with two lenses, and they're zoom lenses, so they're worthless. Cheap. Worthless. Hey, they're beginner lenses. <laughs> I was filling in the blank. I wasn't trying to <laughs> tell you. Well, yeah, they are. No, uh, I, now that I've seen like other lenses and what they do, 
like macro lenses and things of that nature. Yeah, I realized just how far my lenses are off the beaten path of being yeah. something I would ever want to use yeah. in the future. I'd never buy another one. Oh no. All right, I am gonna go back up. That roof is gonna be the best spot. Remind me tomorrow I want to be up here for sunset. The sun, capturing the sunset through the water, be phenomenal. And Russ, that's, that's what I'm saying about picture takers versus creators. Picture takers walk by the puddle, they see the sunset, and they're like, oh, that's cool. Take a picture. Creators, they know what's going to happen. Does that make sense? So the composition, you just know this is where I want to shoot. The bigger issue is then, okay, how do I get that? You know what I mean? I would encourage everyone out there, don't be a picture taker. Because if you think about it this way, picture takers are reactive. They react to what they see, whereas artists are proactive. They, they are, they're creating before it even happens. Or at least they have an idea of it. It doesn't mean that I don't see something gorgeous and say, oh my gosh, I'm gonna take a picture of that, but I shot, I was in Scotland, and watch this video. If you don't watch any of my videos, watch this one. And uh, it's called Heaven's Breath. And it says how to capture a sunrise. And I'm in Glencoe, Scotland, and I had been driving around for three days, and it had been raining. And I was, you know, a little frustrated just because I wanted to shoot. Mm -hmm. And uh, you'll watch me, and it's pouring rain, and I'm driving, and I say, even though it's pitch black, you see me driving through this range. I have the camera on in the car while I'm driving. I said, I, I just, there's something in here. I, I just know there's something in here. And then I go down to this, this inn and, and I'm shooting and I, it's pouring rain and I'm happy to be there. And, and then I wake up in the middle of the night and turn on the infrared cameras that we're gonna turn on in just a second. And uh, I say, it's been raining all night. The last thing I wanna do is get up, but Sometimes the, the best sunrises are after it rains. And I get up and you'll see me drive into it. It's the best sunrise shot I've taken anywhere in the world. It's from, if, at least in my opinion, and uh, for, of my work. And, uh, and I even say in the video camera, it's not, I know it's gonna be amazing. And I say, it's not even showing in the video camera the way it's gonna show on my camera. I say that exact line. And then I get there, and when you see the shot, it's... It's amazing. Let's see if I have it. You have got to be kidding me. No way. Yeah. That is out of control. <laughs> oh my gosh. Isn't that awesome? That's insane. That's a six shot panoramic. <sighs> I knew that something was materializing. Not because I have a sixth sense, you, you see it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So when you do your photography, if you focus more on on that artistic end of it rather than the Okay, am I following the rule of thirds? Yeah, yeah, I, I know what the rule of thirds is, but my point is right. teaching the rule of thirds to somebody who doesn't have an eye is a waste of time. Because of the person who has an eye really doesn't need the rule of thirds. I have never teach it naturally happens. It happens. When you see something you know that this what, is where I should seeing, cut. This is where I should. You're not putting it at dead center because you don't see it as something that should be in dead center. You see it as something that should be in the corner mm -hmm. to be able to give like balance to not just right. that, but the rest of it. It's about symmetry. It's about balance. It's about all those things. It's and so I don't know how to describe it. It's um, you know it when you see it, like that shot, the one I just showed you. It's about finding those bookends to your shot. That's kind of mm -hmm. like how I like to think about it. Where does my shot start and where does it end? You know, and... Well, you place that river or whatever, a stream right. thing, like in the perfect position. Now you could have had that like here or over here and that shot wouldn't, it wouldn't have worked. been at all even close to right. as magnificent as that one was. And I didn't pull that out to, to show you a great shot. I really, I don't know. I just feel like if I can even just to, I should be shooting this whole time, but if I can help somebody who's 
on the path, I'd rather do, you know, but it actually it means a lot to me to help people, so. Thank you. For what it's worth. And Russ, that's, that's what I'm saying about picture takers versus creators. Picture takers walk by the puddle, they see the sunset, and they're like, oh, that's cool. Take a picture. Creators, they know what's gonna happen. 